Hey guys, welcome back in. Excited because it is time for, well, another NBA Futures show here. And who better to help us uh, navigate through another NBA season already than these two gentlemen here, Andy Lang, Tony Mejia in the house. And of course, you can catch these guys all season long on the NBA Tip-Off Show powered by wagertalk.com. Tony Mejia, it feels like we were just here doing a future show on the NBA. And uh, I guess we're sort of back to normal right now. It's not a whole lot of downtime, but you got to be excited with a new association season around the corner. Yeah, I mean, we're back to the 82-game schedule, uh, starting a little earlier. Uh, but, you know, we have um, the season spaced out a little better. And uh, it does feel like uh, we were just here, but no more bubbles. <laughs> the uh, NBA is back in Canada, so everything is normal there. The Raptors won't be uh, stuck playing in Tampa Bay. Uh, and the preseason has begun, and it's as meaningless as ever. Outside of watching the rookies, you see the Lakers at 0-5, uh, the Warriors surprisingly 4-0, and and, uh, and the Heat look like they uh, are taking to Kyle Lowry nicely. But, you know, for, from that standpoint, everybody has uh, got their own agendas in that preseason, so I never touch it. But just interesting to see uh, how some of the rookies are developing, and then uh, we get started here uh, early next week. Well, it's uh, it's going to be interesting, Andy. Uh, first of all, we had some new blood last year, right? Finally, the Hawks, the Knicks. Look at all these new names and teams that we had uh, in the playoffs, certainly in the Eastern Conference buying. Uh, so when you approach the futures market here, back to an 82-game season, how do you, what's the best way for you to look at it? Because we certainly know uh, rest days are coming, are they not? Yeah, we got some teams that really benefited from a good schedule and then some teams that just got hammered. <laughs> the scheduling gods were not on their side. I actually have a couple teams that I'm going to go against, and the schedule is is a big part of that. Um, you got to look at coaching changes. Uh, one of my wins total is just basically a direct impact of a coaching change. We've got some teams that look like they're already tanking <laughs> based on the way they <laughs> built their rosters. <laughs> and we've got some teams that are borderline good or bad, where I think they could go any direction. If they have a good season, they're going to make a big push in the playoffs. If things don't go their way and they get a couple of injuries, I could see them uh, uh, going, going under their, their total a lot. So there's a lot to look at. Uh, I've isolated several season win totals that I really, really love. Of um, and I, I'm I'm very very happy with the slate of futures this year. All right, well that's good. So what we'll do here, guys, is we'll run through some of your season win totals here. Some of these teams that you are looking at, obviously a ton of question marks with a whole lot of teams. So you guys have been able to narrow it down to uh, some teams that, uh, regardless uh, of what may happen, you guys are going to be confident either over or under win totals. So, Tony, me, I'll come to you first. Give us one of the uh, one of the teams that you like the win total either over or under this year. Well, we'll start with the Charlotte Hornets, and I'm going to go ahead and fade them. I thought that James Borrego did a fantastic job last season, and uh, considering they had so many injuries, Gordon Hayward was lost, and Lamelo Ball uh, won the Rookie of the Year despite missing a big chunk of games. But I, I look at their team, and I just don't see any consistent offense. Uh, that I can count on. P.J. Washington's uh, very spotty. Uh, Hayward will be counted on to do uh, his thing. But again, as, as a number one scorer, he leaves a lot to be desired. They drafted James Booknight, and he'll be in that six-man role uh, that Malik Monk was in, and, and Malik Monk is now with the Lakers. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm going to fade the Hornets this season, uh, understanding that the Wizards and Magic are going to be terrible in that division. But I think the Hawks will be better. And uh, we'll talk about the Miami Heat as uh, one of my choices. I think they're going to be significantly better. So uh, the number on the on the Hornets is, I believe, uh, 38 and a half, half uh, yep. universally at both uh, FanDuel, DraftKings, and all, all the other places that have, uh, have win total numbers out. I just see them at, at, as about a 36-win team. I think they'll struggle to make the playoffs, uh, and I'm going to fade them, go under. Love it. All right. Under 38 and a half for the Hornets. Uh, Andy, how about you? Which one, which team you're looking at here to either go over or under their win total? I'm, I got to start with my hometown, Indiana Pacers. And uh, I, I have to, and I have high hopes for them. I'm taking their over 42 and a half season wins. I mentioned coaching 
earlier and uh, the coaching situation for the Pacers last year was just an unmitigated disaster. I think the general public quite understood how bad it was. That coach came in and nobody liked him from the very beginning. He was standoffish from the very, very outset. The media didn't get along with him. The players, the staff, the people inside the building, it was really bad. And it doesn't matter how much you know basketball because I think he's a really good X's and O's coach. But when your team doesn't believe in you, it's just really hard to have success. On top of that, the Pacers, I know every team deals with injuries. The Pacers really, really struggled. At one point, they traded for a guy who got diagnosed with a tumor. Uh, so that that lets you know how bad the injury bugs were, were for them. Uh, Miles Turner, ha- he was having a great year. He had that bad foot injury. And I really think this Rick Carlisle, uh, Carlisle hire was perfect for them. I think they're going to have a really solid perimeter. Um, Karis LeVert kind of started very, very late in the season, and they were unorganized. There was a lot of hero ball. Carlisle should get them into shape uh, on the perimeter. So I think Brogdon and Lavert are going to be really good. We've got a legit all-star in Sabonis, who I have very high expectations for. I think he's in line for a huge, huge year. I think the stabilization of the team is really going to help. Um, they're, ju- they're just going to be looking like a more well-oiled machine rather than the chaotic style that they would have. Um, they also are, are going to come on strong towards the end of the season. So when we're looking at their win total, if they're on pace going in the last couple months, we're in good shape. But in their last 30 games, 15 of them are against Orlando, Orlando, OKC, Washington, Houston, and Detroit. So we get a really, really nice schedule to close out uh, the year. So if they're fighting for a playoff seed, expect them to play really hard by then. Carlisle and the Pacers should be clicking. As long as they can stay a little bit healthy, I have them pegged to get between 45 and 47 wins, easily getting over this 42 and a half total. All right. Not enough credit given to the Indiana Pacers uh, in the marketplace, says Andy. And he knows because, trust me, he cries every year at that team plays. All right. So talk to me here, uh, Tony. Me here. What's another team up that you like either over or under their season win total? Well, I, I definitely agree with Andy that the Pacers should be much improved, few better than Rick Carlisle on both X's and O's and getting the most out of his players. And the Chicago Bulls are going to make a move uh, with their offseason additions. They won the, the free agency game, uh, you know, getting Lonzo Ball in there, uh, getting a DeMar DeRozan to, uh, to come in and play with Zach Levine. Uh, so I, I, I like both of those teams improving. And yet I also like the Cleveland Cavaliers making a little bit of a jump. They went 22 and 50 last year. Uh, they're going to be much better than the Pistons who have a, a youth movement going with the number one pick, Kate Cunningham, and all the kids that they got playing. Uh, so the Cavs will be better than the Pistons, probably worse than the Pacers and Bulls and obviously the Bucks. But th- their their bar is very low, 27 and a half. This is a year where Darius Garland and uh, Colin Sexton should make the jump as young guards. Uh, Kevin Love should be able to stay healthy. He kind of has a chip on his shoulder considering he was mistreated uh, with the Team USA Olympic experience. Uh, and then they added the number one pick uh, for, for them, I believe number uh, four overall or number three in Evan Mobley. Uh, and Laurie Markin is on that team now. Uh, he should be able to spread the floor coming over from Chicago. Uh, so Jared Allen, a full season of, of him being a, a primary shot blocker. I think the Cavs will make a push to win 30 games. And again, bar is low. Give me the over on Cleveland Cavaliers wins after going 22 and 50 last year. All right. Looking a little over there, maybe heading in the right direction to Cleveland Cavaliers. All right, uh, Andy Lang, you gave us uh, the Pacers. You like the over. What's another team you're looking at over or under their win total? Speaking of low bars, I would like to talk about the Orlando Magic. Uh, (laughs) 22 and a half, and I could not jump on the under fast enough. Uh, This is the worst roster, and unfortunately, they also get the worst schedule uh, in the league. Uh, This roster makes no sense. It appears that Terrence Ross is their best player at this point, except they are going to accept any trade for him if it's good enough. Uh, you got, you know, injury concerns with Markel Fultz and Cole Anthony. I do like Suggs, but I just don't know how many minutes they're going to be able to to give him on this team. And how's he going to react on a really bad team? I think this is the worst team in the league. And I'm going to be interested to see how Suggs reacts to being on a terrible team coming from the the really good experience that he had. And their schedule is brutal. Hardest strength of schedule. They have the most back-to-backs in the league And 22 of their first 37 games are on the road. So they get no favors coming out of the gate. 
uh, after the trade deadline last year, where it was obvious they were going into complete tank mode, they had a point differential of minus 13.4 per hundred possessions. If that keeps up, they're just going to keep losing and losing big. I think it's a painful rebuilding year for them. I don't see them getting over 20 wins. So uh, playing under 22 and a half was an easy one for me. Yeah, no, that's uh, woo, Orlando Magic. I'm shocked they even have the basketball team still. All right, Tony <laughs> Mejia, we'll get, uh, let's get one more of these uh, season win totals uh, from a team that you like. I have a feeling. We're heading to Tennessee, but you tell me what's uh, what's one of the teams you like over under at win total. Yeah, I think the Memphis Grizzlies are going to be one of those teams that go all out for 82 games. And as you know, Joe, uh, you can't say that about a lot of NBA teams with load management and whatnot. But this is a young roster that has a chip on its shoulder because it, be- it feels like it belongs with the better teams in the Western Conference. Uh, and you have a driving force in John Morant, who doesn't take any nights off. Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to be healthy for the bulk of this season. He's got a lot to prove. Uh, one of the hardest playing uh, guards in the league is Dylan Brooks. He earned himself a ton of respect with his postseason work last season. Uh, they, they pick up Steven Adams, who's going to be a, a tremendous asset on the defensive end. Gave up Jonas Valanciunas. So the the fact is that while Valanciunas was a load inside and actually worked on his uh, three-point shooting to the point where he was a threat as a seven-footer, Adams is more of a traditional guy who's going to be able to be the catalyst uh, right there as an anchor in the paint. Uh, Brandon Clark, uh, Desmond Bain. I mean, they're deep. DeAnthony Melton. So they're going to come at you in waves, and they're going to be one of those teams that, again, because they're stuck in the the Western Conference where it's such a load to get into the postseason – uh, they'll they'll have to go all out for 82, and the number on them is just 41 and a half. So I like them to be a uh, 500 team, well, much, uh, better than 500 team, and I uh, really like them as uh, as uh, we put out now, which you can get for nine dollars between now and the start of the season. A futures package mm-hmm. uh, on uh, awards, win totals, um, all sorts of futures. The, the Grizzlies are my favorite play, so. They'll they'll be out there as uh, as one of the anchors for me as far as the win totals. I think they'll win about forty five to forty eight games, uh, and and I really like their roster depth to uh, play in all eighty two. Yeah, I mean you the youth uh, taking that next step there with uh, with Morant and company. There you you got to figure they're going to be just that much better than what we witnessed last year. Looking forward to watching them this year. And Andy. How about you? We talked about the new blood in the playoffs last year, but we had some of the, uh, well, I guess some of that old blood too uh, still in there. Talk to me about this uh, this team over under the win total out in L.A. My favorite win total is the Los Angeles Clippers under 45 and a half. Uh, biggest story, obviously, is Kawhi Leonard uh, being out. And if, if you made a list of professional athletes who are, least excited to come back from injury Kawhi might be number one on that list so I just don't think we see him in this regular season if especially if it starts to go bad the ripple effect of losing him is huge I mean you have the offensive production but then you also have the the defensive work and it worked short term for Paul George and company in the postseason but eventually it just became too much to overcome and this is going to be a long long season Everything is on Paul George, and they are one Paul George injury away from being a a really rough team. They're going to need Morris to shoot the ball lights out from three all year. Reggie Jackson is going to have to play at his playoff level, but now he's got to do it for the entire regular season. Uh, They've got some injury-prone players, and they traded for Eric Bledsoe, who is, I guess we'll just say inconsistent (laughs) would be a good word. Their schedule is tough on five separate occasions. They have to play five games in seven nights. This is not a very deep team. Paul George is going to need some nights off. And they have the second most back-to-backs in the league. So the schedule does not work out well for a team like this. Their division is tough. I think it's the the second toughest in the league. they got the Lakers, the Suns, Warriors, and the Kings. Um, They're plus 225 to miss the playoffs. I wonder what happens to this team if it goes really bad in the first half. I don't think plus 225 to miss the playoffs is a bad one. I expect a lot of struggles from the Clippers. That's my favorite win total under 45 and a half. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the rest days. I mean, we know what Kawhi and Paul did, Paul George did last year with the you play, I'll take off. No, you, I'll play, you take off. I don't know. Uh, are you in agreement there, uh, um, 
Talk to me here, Tony Me here with this Clippers team. It's going to be tough to navigate without uh, without Kawhi early on, isn't it? Yeah, no doubt. And I, I'm in agreement that Kawhi Leonard signed a long-term deal to stay in L.A., his hometown. That's where he wants to be. But I think he did it with the understanding that, hey, I'm, I'm signing long-term. That means you won't see me this season. I need to make sure that I'm very healthy once I come back. You, you know, that was his M.O. when he, he moved away from San Antonio. Don't rush my my recovery period, I need to be 100%. So I think we don't see Kawhi Leonard this season. I'm in agreement with Andy. And uh, Patrick Beverly, losing a guy like that to driving force uh, inside that locker room and, and gets you to play on you know that fourth game in six nights uh, by demanding effort, I think that's a big loss. Even though he's not much offensively, he's a pest. Uh, they'll miss him. I like Terrence Mann a lot, but again, they're, they're going to uh, miss – Beverly and Kawhi on the defensive end. Uh, I'm I'm in total agreement with Andy that uh, they they will go under 45 wins. I think they'll miss the playoffs as well. All right, good stuff there. And guys, of course, quick reminder: you can visit uh, both of these gentlemen right now. You heard Tony mention it. Nine dollar packages uh, to start off the NBA season. It's a great opportunity uh, to build that bankroll early on in the NBA with these gentlemen. Certainly not only with futures packages, but all throughout the season. Make sure you're visiting Tony Mia and Andy Lang over at wagertalk.com. All right, we talked about some team totals. Let's talk about a couple of these uh, player uh, awards and, and uh, props and things along those lines. Something uh, Tony Mejia seems to be, I don't know if he's got that crystal ball. Every year it seems like he pulls out either the rookie of the year or the MVP. He's always doing Something along those lines. So fantastic stuff, Tony. But talk to me this year about uh, one or two of these uh, player awards. Uh, MVP, for instance. You got anybody in mind that you like? Well, Kevin Durant tore his Achilles in 2019 in June. And so what he did last season was actually pretty impressive considering you know, the, the book <laughs> injury is you're really not right until two years in. Well, we're, we're two years into this. He's got James Harden next to him, but it's still going to be the Kevin Durant show. The fact that Kyrie Irving, uh, you know, I don't think he plays this season. We'll see. I, I don't think he relents and uh, and gets vaccinated, which means he won't be playing uh, you know, at all in Brooklyn because New York has those uh, those laws, and they're they've already put their foot down on on allowing him to play strictly road games. So it's Durant and James Harden. There's going to be shots to go around. Kevin Durant plus 650 to win Ooh. the MVP at FanDuel. That's beautiful odds. And look, Durant has only won one MVP in his career in 2014. Uh, and he's got a couple of finals MVPs, obviously. But this is something that I think will be a driving force for him to put a team on his back. He took so much heat for leaving Oklahoma City for Golden State. Coming off an injury, I think uh, he's going to be really motivated and they, they have the target on their backs as the uh, NBA preseason favorite. So give me Kevin Durant of the Brooklyn Nets to be your MVP. And again, plus 650 at FanDuel. Get the best odds you have because FanDuel odds are better than DraftKings odds uh, on that particular prop. Uh, so you want to shop around with all these props. I love that. And speaking of props, guys, uh, nobody better at it than Andy Lang at wagertalk.com across all the sports, but certainly – the NBA made a killing last year in NBA props. So as you take a look at the board here from a futures perspective, you have a uh, prop or two for us, Andy, you like? Yeah, I got a couple. I, this one kind of has some comedic value. I was actually laughing with uh, one of my one of my fellow gambling associates. We like Russell Westbrook under 9.1 rebounds averaged a game. I just don't think LeBron's going to be down with the triple-double thing from Russell Westbrook. <laughs> I don't, I don't think he's going to be getting those easy rebounds when he lines up on the block on free throws. Yeah. Uh, I think those are going to go to LeBron and Anthony Davis. And uh, I, I, I think if anybody is going to go for triple doubles on that team, it's not going to be Russell Westbrook. So we were kind of laughing at Russ trying to sneak rebounds away from LeBron and Anthony Davis and going, I, I don't think they're going to be down with that. If he does it a couple times, there might be a stern talking to in the locker room. <laughs> so uh, he's been able to get away with it on a couple teams. I just don't see it on the Lakers. So I'll take Westbrook under 9.1 rebounds and average at a game. Ooh, I love it. All right, they're going against Russ. Wow, triple-double machine. All right, Tony Mejia, uh, we talked about MVP. Talk to me about the new kids on the block here. You got a rookie in mind this year? 
I do. I think Jalen Green wins this award over Kate Cunningham. They're one, two, uh, obviously oh. in the in draft order and one, two, as far as how polarizing people, uh, how polarizing they are towards people's opinions. So, you know, you've got people in the Cunningham camp who feel like he'll, he's going to be able to fill the stat sheet the way that LaMelo Ball did last season. And that got him the nod over Anthony Edwards, who's, you know, more in, in Green's uh, way of, of playing in terms of being on the highlight shows every single night. Uh, and Green is going to get every single opportunity to be the man in Houston. Uh, they also got Alfie Sangoon, the uh, the center who who play a lot. But the Rockets aren't going to win a lot of games. But Jalen Green is going to average over 20 points per game as a rookie. I think he gets that over Kate Cunningham. And uh, here, this is a case where the odds are better at DraftKings than FanDuel. You can get Jalen Green to win Rookie of the Year at plus 275. Uh, one other name to watch, Davion Mitchell of the Sacramento mm -hmm. Kings. He's at plus 1,800. Uh, probably because De'Aaron Fox is there and uh, and Tyrese Halliburton. But I think Mitchell is going to uh, win a lot of games for the Kings with his defense uh, and, and, and the fact that uh, they won the summer league. He's already made a difference in the preseason. He's actually shooting 50% from three-point range between summer league and the preseason. Uh, so that was one of the, the, the concerns about him is what his offense translate. You know his defense well. He's already going to be the top on-ball defender on his own team. Uh, so Mitchell as a, as a potential X factor but uh, Jalen Green as my choice to win Rookie of the Year. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that screaming in the back is our producer, Robert, who's already got the Jalen Green jersey on, I'm sure, <laughs> here. Just screaming and yelling, whooping it up with Jalen Green in Houston. Talk to me, Andy. Uh, give me another one of these uh, prop bets that you have circled up in Florida. Yeah, this might be deemed a homer pick, but I truly believe in it. Demonta Sabonis over 20.3 <laughs> points per game. <laughs> I love hey, his, <laughs> his average point total has gone up yep. every single year. He's going to be a huge benefactor of a more organized team and structure. Uh, Doug McDermott and Aaron Holiday are gone. McDermott averaged 13.6 uh, points per game. They're going to need to fill that production. Carlisle is no dummy. He knows that's how good Sabonis is. I mean, you, if you look at Sabonis' game log, there's some games that make no sense. He had several games where he played 30 minutes and had like seven shots for like got like eight points because they were just so disorganized. That's just not going to happen. Sabonis is going to touch the ball a lot, and I love that the perimeter is going to be more organized. He's going to get a lot more uh, open shots and open baskets. I think the the lane is going to be a lot more open for him. Uh, Twenty point three is what he averaged last year. I expect him to improve a little bit on that. So I'll take Sabonis over twenty point three points per game. Yeah, Chris Duarte too. Looking forward to seeing him in a Pacers uniform. See how he can uh, come out of uh, Oregon. See how that works for him. All right, so we got players uh, props now. We've got some awards. We got some team totals. So let's talk about division uh, titles. If there's uh, anything across the board there, Tony Mejia, that uh, you liked, any one team you've got circled uh, to take it down more than the other? Yeah, I mean, look. The Miami Heat had a really rough season last year uh, and still finished only one game behind the upstart Atlanta Hawks in the Southeast Division. Uh, the Hawks now have a target on their backs, and Miami is either plus money or right at around pick, a minus 105, uh, depending on where you shop to win the Southeast and reclaim that. Guess who's your point guard now? Kyle Lowry, a guy who got a ton to prove. Uh, who make life easier on Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. They were also able to hold on to Victor Oladipo uh, because Oladipo is not going to be healthy to start the season, but he should be around uh, come January, February, and he'll make a difference with this defense alone off the bench. Uh, they also added Markeith Morris, so they've got a veteran uh, uh, to, to play in the, in, the, in the front court with Dwayne Dedman. They've also got Caleb Martin in there now, who's going to play defense immediately. Uh, Duncan Robinson got paid. You know what he offers from three-point range. And then the X Factor, Tyler Hero. Everybody knew, knew that he took a step back after uh, helping be a driving force in the bubble to the Heat's uh, surprise NBA Finals appearance. Well, he, he's got to step it up. Uh, you know, the, the, the fact that James Harden isn't a member of the Miami Heat is directly tied to Tyler Hero and the need to keep him. Well, Hero's got to play uh, up to uh, what his capacity is because he really did take a step back last year. So with Butler, Lowry, Hero, Robinson, Adebayo, uh, I think the Miami Heat are in for a big season. We'll take the first step uh, with winning the Southeast Division, though. And again, 
you, you got minus 105 to plus money. So ride the Miami Heat over the Atlanta Hawks. Those are clearly the top two teams in the Southeast. Bam, Lowry, Butler, P.J. Tucker. That is a that is a defensive dream right now, Pat Riley. Uh, cooking up the witches brew there in Miami going, yeah, I'll fix PJ. this. Yeah, I'm, I'll fix this thing. That's a hell of a defensive <laughs> starting five. Uh, all right, Andy, how about it, man? You look around uh, these divisions here. Do you have one team that you like a little more than the other? Yeah, I like that. Uh, I like that heat pick. Uh, I loved uh, Tyler Hero setting himself up for either an epic season or or disaster when he said uh, Luca, Trey, and Ja. I feel like my name should be in that category too. So he's calling <laughs> a shot. He said that. Yep. He's calling a shot. So uh, mm-hmm. if he gets anywhere near that, that team's going to be awesome. Yeah, I, I don't understand why Phoenix is plus two twenty to win the division. I really like this price. Mm-hmm. Uh, competitive division, Lakers, Clippers, Warriors, Kings. Uh, the Lakers win total is 52 and a half. I think that's a little bit low. I think the Lakers are going to get off to a, a tough start as they kind of figure everything out. Anthony Davis is not exactly the, the most, doesn't have the most endurance in the injury department. So if the Lakers are 52 and a half, the Suns are only 51 and a half. And I get plus 220 on a team who should win that division. Uh, I don't see any step back for them. I know Chris Paul is another year older, but they're going to be healthy. They had some injuries uh, in the postseason, and I like their depth with uh, both the Cam's campaign, Cam Johnson. I think it's a team that's built for regular season success. Aiton is only going to get better. Uh, Devin Booker is, you know, a superstar. I think they're going to have a really good year, and I think plus 220 when they're overpriced on a team team against the spread last year so i think this is way overpriced the lakers are getting a little bit too too much love on winning that division as the favorite i'll ride with the suns again to win the division yeah clippers nuggets take a step back uh phoenix certainly on the uh, rise there like it that's pretty good price too uh all right guys there you got it here we've got future bets across the board we got win totals we've got some uh, award props and player props and of course there you got it. We got the Phoenix Suns taking the division down in the West. Miami taking it down in the East for Tony Mejia. And we got $9 packages, guys, available for the first week uh, in order to welcome back the NBA season. So take advantage of it right now. Head over to Tony Mejia's page at wagertalk.com. Head over to Andy Lang's page at wagertalk.com and make sure you are tailing these guys all NBA season long. A lot going on here, but welcome back to the association. No better way to profit than with these two gentlemen. And on behalf of Tony Mejia and Andy Lang, guys, make sure you tune in to the NBA tip-off show, kicking off again to the start of the NBA season. We'll see you weekdays right around 4 p.m. Eastern time. In the meantime, best of luck, guys, with your plays. We'll talk to you again soon. Yep. All right.